Good afternoon, five minutes with Pastor Day. This is a wonderful day, a beautiful Sunday. Uh, and uh, it's uh, been a little warm, but it's been cooled off. In fact, visits, I think it's 59 here this morning whenever we got up to uh, rallying around. But uh, this is the day the Lord has made. I want to share with you something that, why do we preach Christ? Why, why don't we preach something else, you know? Why? You know, there's sometimes we need to just go back and remind ourselves why we do what we do. What's your purpose in life? What, 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 you know, why do you believe what you believe? Because grandma said it or somebody said it or you heard it through some other means? Is that the reason why you believe what you believe or you believe what you believe because you've read God's word and you know what God says? See, I believe that God's word is the absolute truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so as we were looking at that and, and why we preach Christ, sometimes we just need to remind ourselves why we do what we do. Why do you believe what you believe? Why do you believe that Christ is the way? Why do you want to follow his word? Why don't you just want to live any ungodly way that you possibly want to? There's pleasure in sin. Just go enjoy yourself and then just, just fill up on sin and everything. Because you know that there is a judgment day coming, one of the days you and I are going to stand before God. I'm going to stand before him, and you're going to stand before him. The psalmist in Psalms 40, he kind of explains this. And, and, and it's kind of the whole area of salvation. He says uh, in Psalms 40, verses 1, he said, I waited patiently upon the Lord, and he heard, inclined his ear unto me and heard my cry. The psalmist realized that he was in a mess. He couldn't get out by his own strength. You can't either. You think you can just turn over the new leaf anytime you want to, not without the power of God. He said, he said, he brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay. The horrible pit is simply, it's a trap that you're in because of sin. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. I don't care who you are. Billy Graham sinned and he had to have repentance. He had to, he had to have the grace of God. Everybody. And he said, this horrible pit, is, it, it holds you there. The horrible pit. He, he, he explains it, the horrible pit and the miry clay. And that's the way, and that, what he's explaining here, it is so slippery, you try to get out and you right back down in it. You say, well, I'm going to turn over a new leaf, and you do it for a, a day and a half, and back down you're in, because you can't do it on your own. Friend, God doesn't expect you to do it on your own. That's the reason why Jesus came. And he notices, he said, he brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay. Not only did he bring us up, but he set our feet upon a rock and established my going. The reason why we preach Christ is because he's the one that gives us joy. He's the one that gives us purpose. He's the one that gives us life. You and I know that we're going to die one day. We're going to stand before God and give an account of everything we've done, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Every secret work, the Bible says, is going to be brought. And you and I are going to stand there. You're not going to be there. I'll be there and you'll be there. And, and, and because of that, we need to have forgiveness. You know, if you, if you reject Christ, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I ask you, why do you, who do you serve? Do you serve Christ or you serve self and live your own way and do anything you want to do and just say, well, it's all all right. But one of these days, you're going to give an account of every word you've said, every thought you've had, every action. The Bible says that you're going to do that. You're going to do that. I'm going to do that. You need to get that through your thick head. You're going to do that, and we're going to face God. He said, he brought me up out of the horrible pit and out of the mire clay. And it was he set my feet upon the rock and established my going. We preach Christ because he's the one that altered our life. He's the one that set our feet up on the solid rock. He's the one that lifted us up. Not only that, but it says, and he has put a new song in my mouth, even praising to our God. He's the one that put a song in our heart. Establish it. By the power of the Holy Spirit, establish it. See, you, you will follow the things of sin because it has a straw on you and you can't change it. You sin, you do things you know you shouldn't do and hope nobody finds out, but God sees. And one of these days you're going to give an account. One of these days, you're going to face God face to face. I'm going to face him face to face. I'd say, I know I've said that two or three times, but, but the reason why we preach Christ is because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He can give you a song in your heart. He can give you a purpose in life. He can give you a new beginning. 
And he says here, he says, and he has established a, a new, put a new song in my heart, my mouth, and even praising to our God. You know, Paul was one that thought he was doing right, and when God struck him on the way to Damascus and said, why are you killing me, Paul? Why are you killing Christians? Why are you doing that? And that's the reason why Paul had such a change that he knew that the, the power of God that set him free. That's the reason why he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation. When he was standing before King Agrippa and he gave an account, he said, O king, he said, the, the power of God struck me and he opened my eyes to see. Paul realized that man was destined for eternal destruction. And because of that, Paul said, I, he sent me to open their eyes and, and, and to, to raise, the, open my eyes. He said there was five, five things that he said that God had said to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to life, from the power of Satan unto God, to receive forgiveness of sin and an inheritance. You see, God wants to bless you. God wants to help you. But if you don't change, judgment is waiting out there for you. Waiting out there for me. But he said, Paul said, I, for this reason I come, I want to open your eyes to see God is good. He wants to give you the best. The devil wants to destroy you. He said to turn them from darkness to light. You walk in darkness if you're walking on your own. You stumble. The Bible says you don't even know what you stumble at. You, your life's messed up in drugs and sex and anything else out there. Your life is messed up in the power of Satan and to God to receive forgiveness of sin. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God to deliver you. That's the reason why the psalmist has said he has lifted me up out of that pit that I couldn't get out of. Establish my going. Give me a song in my heart peace and a melody in my heart folks god loves you and he cares about you he is a way the truth and life and so that's the reason why we preach jesus christ the answer to all men's problems is the love of god lord bless you and we'll see you later